Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Learn, Grow, Invest meeting. So I'm Jermaine, co-founder of the community. I have here with me Chika Verwe, and we're going to go through the JFP IPO prospectus. So it's going to be an interesting discussion. We've been talking about it since it came out on Monday. I believe it was Chike. And so yeah. we're going to we're going to go through the offer, talk about the highlights. And then at the end, we're going to go through the prospectus. We're going to look at the management discussion and analysis in depth. And then we're going to look at the financials because that's very important before you make a decision about this IPO. So um, let us jump right into it. So we are a Bible-based investment community, and as such, we definitely want to remember and honor the Lord our God before we start. So let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We pray for your wisdom, knowledge, insight, and understanding to be able to go through this and make a wise investment decision. We pray that you'll bless this community and give us a mind and a heart to learn. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. All right. So... Let me bring up this presentation here. So what we're going to do actually, as I said, we're gonna go through the highlights first. And so most of what you see, if, if, if you've already read the prospectus, some of this is gonna be, you know, stuff that you'd have seen, and then you'll get the real value in terms of at the end from the discussion and analysis that we're gonna do. So um, yes, good evening, everyone. <laughs> Brianna, come on. Yeah, come on. I was I was looking, I was waiting for you to speak first. Too soon, Brianna. Too soon, too soon. All right, so let's 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 get right into this. Um, so let us start here. So we definitely want to say first that anything that we discuss here, Chica and myself, is just for discussion, education, entertainment, and illustrative purposes only, Please. and should not be construed as professional financial advice, solicitation, or recommendation to buy or sell any securities, and especially JFP. Right? We do this to educate you so you can make a discussion, a, a, a decision after you've spoken with your financial advisor. All right, so we're we're just here to share the facts as we see them. All right, so this is the flow that we're gonna go through. We're gonna talk about what's in the offer. We're gonna go through just the, the highlights, some of the charts that they had in in the prospectus. We'll speak up about them at a high level, or maybe Chike, do you do you want us to just go through the financials at that point? Because we could do it that way. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay. And then we'll talk about the dividend policy. Uh, Chike has some interesting thoughts on that part. So we'll, we'll, we'll hear that. And then we'll go through the, the MDNA last. And then the final step is we'll let you know how you can apply if you're interested in doing so. All right, so let's talk about the company. The company has been incorporated for 36 years. So it would have started out primarily manufacturing fiberglass. And they've since, you know, expanded their offerings, right? So um, a lot of persons have to <laughs> kind of wrap their mind around everything that the company offers now. But what I did here is list some of the partnerships that they have. You know, Starbucks, I think, is one of the more notable ones recently. And it, I, I was mindful, Chike, not to kind of imply that there's a partnership with Learn, Grow, Invest because our logo is right there. So I hope nobody thinks that, that that's yes. what we're doing. <laughs> But um, it says at the end here that their manufacturing capabilities are include but not limited to, to the manufacturing of furniture for offices, hotels, restaurants, laboratories, laboratories, schools, point of sale items, and more. So one of the things I heard in, in some of the, the discussions I checked out where, where, where other persons reviewed it, where they spoke about, um, you know, I think one of the um, you know, vaccination stations, it was Shike. I don't know if you heard that, that they were able to, 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 to support um, the rolling out of that. And so oh, it yeah. seems to me that the company kind of tries to use their resources to be able to um, meet a need that fits their target demographic. 
Um, so that's that's definitely something that means that they they're willing to look at those opportunities. I thought that was interesting to note, and you know everything that we said here really covers a wide range of things. So what, one of the things you'll see when we go through the the prospectus is some of the customers that they've worked with, some of the work that they've done. The work look the the finish looks amazing, excellent work from what we've seen, and they seem to have a a good reputation for for the work that they do which is which is definitely a good sign in terms of the offer uh, these are the details one of the most common questions we get when ipos come out is when does it open when does it close when do you get your refund if you need to get a refund and when will the ipo will list so all of those those questions are answered here so the opening date is monday the closing date is February 28th, but usually with IPOs, once they've gotten the required amount, they're allowed to close it. There's usually an, an allowance for that. And based on the amount of shares being made available, which we'll, which we'll cover next, it, it's considered a small IPO, right? So 280 million being raised. When we saw the likes of Spurtree, for example, being able to raise a billion in about a week, I think it's it's most persons are expecting this to be oversubscribed as well in terms of basis of allotment once it's closed so let's say it closes on on the 21st then you you can expect to hear your your allotment six days after that date and i think it's six business days that we work with right gk right yeah so sure. looking into the next week so maybe by the end of february and then in terms of your refunds to be issued that's going to be 10 days after the closing date so bear that in mind and then it will be listed five business days after approval not not after closing but after approval so i would say you can maybe expect this to list sometime in march maybe by first to second week of march right that's that's what i'm estimating right chica yeah yeah all right so in terms of share capital, they have authorized 10 billion shares. Um, and the number of shares that were issued prior to this, this invitation was 980 million. And they've issued an, an additional 140 million. So what that means is that the share is outstanding, which is definitely something that you look out for. So when we get to the dividend conversation, that dividend amount that they're proposing based on profits will have to be divided by the number of shares outstanding. So that's an important number that you want to look out for. So that's going to be 1.12 billion shares outstanding. All right. So the reason why, so, so, so two, two key lines to look at here. So the offer itself is 140 million and then an, an existing shareholder is selling 140 million. So it, the, the entire offer is not for 280, but 140 plus 140 being sold. And then we'll talk about next what is available to, to the public as you see here. So based on, and, and this is, is common. So if, if this is your very first IPO, this is a tip. You usually have an opportunity if you're an employer at a company to get some, some allocation. That's, that's usually what, what most of these companies try to do. So for the employer- Which is very much recommended. Exactly, exactly. I, th I think it builds goodwill with, with, with employees, definitely. So, I mean, though, what, what, what I was curious to find is that there is no discount for the employees, which was interesting. Because, I mean, maybe employees could benefit from, I mean. Well, so, well, that needs to be addressed uh, for a reminder of persons who are unaware. The reason why there's no discount is basically, it, and it hasn't been set in stone, but if you remember the was it the Financial Services Commission um, has a, had an issue that was brought about this whole disparity of where certain uh, I never knew that. get get the re reduction in price. So what happens now is that for the last couple of IPOs, if you've actually if you actually look back on yeah, them, I I right, yeah. set set amount across the board. There is no there is no part of being oh promotion in terms of in our, our incentive to join a particular broker, et cetera, et cetera. 
for for reduction in in the cost that that has been well, done well I, mean, I understand that but i think i think a company has a right to give their employees a discount on shares but that that's a, that's not for us to to, to argue about sure. right now right sure so um key strategic partners this is typically and and, and the prospector should list this but this is commonly any key partners or vendors that they work with, et cetera. Um, so usually there's some allocation for them as well. GK, who is the lead broker, has allocated to them 61 million. I trust that they're going to make full use of that. And then what's, what's left for the public is just 168 million. So out of the 280, it's really 168 that's for the public, which makes it even smaller than, than before. Right. So we've seen offers exceed a billion dollars in terms of, of subscriptions. So 168 million is really small considering that. Right. Yeah. So just bear that in mind what, what this means. And I think naturally so persons are anticipating over subscription. And I think that's one of the things that we've come to see as, you know, hallmarks of these offers. I think they're, they're usually priced and positioned appropriately to get the oversubscription status. I don't know if that's just me. I don't know if you feel that way as well, Chike, but they seem to be positioned optimally so you can say, well, our offer was oversubscribed kind of thing. It has felt that way, and that's fine. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, it is what it is, right? All right, so in terms of use of proceeds, you definitely want to look for this for any offer that you're reviewing. You want to be able to see why the company is going to take on that money, why the company is going to issue new shares or take on debt or do, do an APO, et cetera. And you want to see whether or not how the business has managed themselves, they, they are able and capable to make use of that money properly, right? So for them, it, it, it says in the prospectus, it is a company's intention to use the proceeds to increase its working capital, and based on the type of business that makes sense, right? Um, and to take ad advantages of more opportunities for revenue and profit growth. So they seem to, to I mean, just from what I've seen, I think they definitely will need the capital, right? Based on based on what we've seen. You have some point to no yeah, point to note is in the investor briefings that they've had, they've, uh, it has also been mentioned that they plan to pay down on some debt as well too. So that's something to take a note of as we go on, going to the financials. Yes, okay. Because and I heard that when I watched Kalila's interview, but I didn't see it under use of proceeds. So I was interested mm -hmm. to see why they didn't um, explicitly state that in the prospectus. Um, but I also saw, I think it was Metri who was on Kalila's, yeah. he, he, he made a comment about wanting to clear debts. So <laughs> I think, I think that, which is why that, it's very important in that top, in that, in that statement that was made because the amount that is about to be captured, let's see how, when we get to the financials, how much debt they truly have. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, and then of course, naturally what you find as well is that the, the companies use a portion of the proceeds to pay for their cost of listing, right? So the 25 million here will be inclusive of the financial advisor fees, brokerage fees, legal fees, auditor fees, et cetera. Right? It's a lot that goes into listing. So they have those fees to cover. All right. So you want us to, you want to share, your screen, GK, to go through the financials? Uh, actually, no, let's do it from your side first with this okay. side. So let's talk on this first before I get to that part. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody heard of, of, or for those who have actually seen the investor briefing, they had put out the financials in terms of the last, what is this now, four years, since so 2016 to 2020. But this was a summary pretty much. So it was from 2016, based on and and the way how the company was formed. Um, Jeremy, we're gonna switch for a quick second because what I want to do is did I put it together yet? One second. Yeah. I want to put together. I did take some snippets of the comp. Yes, I did. I put it together already. So I, I did take some snippets from the investor one of the investor forums that I just wanted Great. to share quickly about the company's journey 
Um, and I think that is that is very important. So let me bring it up. All right. And I can and then I can share it. There we go. Okay, good. So here. So pretty much this is taken from, and I'll say it, this was taken from when they did the GK in investment presentation. I, I liked I liked how it was laid out in terms of in terms of that you investment. Full screen. You wanted the slideshow so we can see it better. Yeah, there we go. Right. So the company basically has been basic has been around or started from since 1983 to where it is now. So truth be told, when you're looking at the company, I don't think of this company as somebody that is literally just coming to market it's just an opportunity now that the market is favorable to basically obtaining capital it's better than going to the bank um, exactly because they, they they tried to list back in 2011 and i was really hoping to hear what was the issue they didn't really explicitly say what what was the the reason for not listing back in 2011 they just said, you know, alluded to it not working out. So I was really curious to know what would have caused that. Well, as I say, nothing, nothing until it's until it's appointed time. So they're here now. And this is the part that while we are looking at the financials, that I had a little bit of, of gross with. It's not even a concern. Uh, that's not the word I would use. It's simply that for a company that has been around from since as it states pretty much let's let's go back to looking at it where it really started to come alive i would genuinely say is in the 2000s right when they transitioned to having a bigger facility that could take on mass production and bigger jobs etc a 75000 square foot facility is no small small order yeah. and having 75 employees for a company that is coming from so far back the financial statements that were provided, at least based on what the auditor said, this is what they were able to audit, is technically the two best years. So go back to sharing. You take over sharing for a second. Yeah. Because I don't have that. Go back to that again. So this one, the, the financials that I was showing here, are you are, are you meant to go today? That's right. This same one. So as yeah. we're looking at the financials, we look at the company progressing, a company progressing. And I get this and I respect this 2016 coming over but the only two years that you actually get financials for that or should I say we got financials for that we can actually do calculations mm -hmm. on for 36 years yeah correct was 2019 2020 nine months of 2019 sorry nine months of 2020 yeah, nine months yeah. of and uh, nine months of 2021 so for the analysts that are that are there we were able to at least do some do some type of of um analysis with respect to trend with respect to assumption of what the growth of the company would be and it is at that point that while i praise their yearly performance of 2019 and 2020 it's their two best years it is what's coming after that i have concerns with from a quantitative standpoint yeah but yeah. there's a lot of things that aren't going to that weren't said in the slides that we're going to present that were said in the investor forum they couldn't put in for instance everybody was asking about where is their future growth coming from what is their pipeline etc the first thing is that they said that they couldn't be they couldn't put in or they didn't put in a deal that is that well the deal is current so let me share again that deal um so the deal that is currently there is do i have it no i don't yeah we're going to have a full screen when you look at it one second i'm just gonna have to just i'm just gonna have to bring it up in a in a picture is the deal there um because i don't have the deal yeah i have the deal now so one second so No, but I, I, I thought the same thing as well, because if it was a brand new company or maybe a company that's only been around for a couple of years, that would have been fine. But right. So this is their, should have. Yeah, go ahead. Go right, ahead. So this is their 2022 pipeline that they have. Right. And it, it couldn't be mentioned in the prospectus, but it, it was it was put up basically for those because apparently many people asked about that. What is their what is their future growth? Um, 
perspectives. What does that look like? So the thing that I took away from the company, you said it just now, is that revenue is up and down. It depends on the contracts that they have locked in. It depends as well too on, on when they and get in the terms money. of those of those contracts. Correct. So it is key for the investor, as far as I'm concerned, to understand that revenue might not be fluid and expected every single time. So the growth trend of the company might be up one time, especially quarterly when you look at the quarters. It might be very high one quarter, low another, high again, and that's dependent on who they on who they come together with. Additionally, their plan, Mr. Mr. Siago, the CEO, said that their plan is in terms of expansion outside of Jamaica, they want to go into take advantage of the current supply chain issues that they're having in the United States where containers cost exponentially more to ship from yeah. China to the United States versus if they try to move the same products from Jamaica to the United States. And they plan to go over into the United States and do door to door knocking and become basically door to door sales. Yeah, that, that was that was said as well. And you know what what I was concerned about with that when I heard that is can do they have the resources to maintain? So so let's say they go they go door to door and business is supposed to triple. Can they actually manage that growth? Right. That was, right. That was something that had, I mean that that's that's something that it's 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 good to have that issue. And I mean, of course, you can always try to put things in place, but sometimes you are not prepared for massive growth. Well, we will see because that's the next that's the next thing, basically. What from from and I'll bring that up in a short while in their in their financials. But as we talk, you know, I always I don't stick on the revenue part and the gross margin, profit margin part. I like to look on where the expenses really fall in. So yeah. this this particular chart paints an interesting picture about their about their pipeline intentions going forward. So if they do actually manage to go into the United States and do and take advantage, capitalize on the current situation of supply chain issues, and the the issue that they face that I found was that they have admitted it. They're, because of the quality of their work, the pricing is, is higher than, than competitors, right? But their, well, but the the their, their pricing is competitive in the US space. And I, I, I had heard that part, I think. It's but continue, still, con it, continue. Yeah, yeah, they said while competitive in the US space, they're still, they said it's competitive in the US space but it's still it's still going to be a challenge because if the products are coming from china or the, or the other competitors can build something that is cheaper i do like the fact that they said though they are not willing to cheapen the way how they do their work and they would they are keeping it to standard so if the two things work out moving across to the world for growth prospects in terms of doing the door-to-door -door salesman because they actually said as well too that they intend to take on more staff to do so agents there's something that everybody needs to keep in 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 context about about the company so do i have it up one second yes i do have it up um the german tell me if everybody, if you see my screen zoom in yeah i'm, I'm seeing excel yeah okay, good so there's something very important to keep in context and this is gfp when it comes to the company they make a really nice set of revenue. This is their revenue line. Now, because it's only two two years, basically, it's not going to put a nice chart up. So we're going to just work with the numbers. So this is this is five hundred and three million, four hundred and forty two million. You can see in the last two years, the revenue has started to come down. In the nine months of revenue, comparative to the twenty twenty one section of revenue right now, it actually has decreased as well. But that's not the point I want to I want to make in correlation to the chart that is this in terms of branch to the world. If they need to expand, they need to expand this there you go. line, which is their operating expenses and specifically their administrative expenses. And that has been my growth with the company. When you look on their revenue, a chunk of it is taken out when it comes to their expenses, and by the time everything is done, what you end up with at the end in terms of profit is very small. 
Yeah. And it it was more concerning to me when they when you look on the nine months twenty twenty one. Yeah, I saw that. I had to actually read the prospect as to one if I was seeing it in. They in lost the, a ton yeah. load of money at that point. So the, where the profit was literally, yeah, minuscule. And then yeah. when you do the calculations for the for the trailing twelve months, and this is for the more technical persons, they end up in a negative based on based on how I did it. So what that all says is that you as the investor. You re they really, I understand now the whole working capital requirement because they're going to need it. Working capital, by the way, for everybody, working capital is equity. So let's let's go to the to the to the the um balance sheet. This is the balance sheet information that is pulled directly, and then the calculations. Their equity in 2019, 131 million. 2020, 203. Nine months for 2020, 209. It dips for nine months, 2021, and the trailing 12 months shows it dipping even more to 200. So they really do need equity slash working capital. They need to get that in. But then there's a concern that happened, and we're going to talk about the dividend policy in a bit, but it happened in the dividend that I had a concern about, which yeah. was just before coming to market, the company extracted $186 million in a dividend payment. Wait, now, wait. Interesting to me because if you extract that amount and you're going to raise 280, like you could have it's not it's not just that. Well, for me, it wasn't that. It was the fact that there are only two places that dividend extraction comes out from. It either comes out from your net profit or it's coming out from your retained earnings. When you get down to that point, right? To the retained earnings, there is a significant dip that happened as well too at that point with retained earnings for the financial well. They couldn't even take it out basically for the financial year. Basically, they would have had to, they, in terms of they couldn't have taken it out of net profit because the net profit really wasn't would not have supported 186 million dollars as you as you can you you would have seen up at the top like that. So I am I am wondering about that dividend policy going forward. That's the first thing. Secondly, I'm wondering why they did it, right? And at the same time asking for the most crucial part about their about about what they need which is working capital but the truth is for the last two years and for the years prior you see a company that has been coming up the line and the company still by the standards that i uh, that i use and, and indicators that i use still ended up in a positive light the things that the analysts normally talk about the gross profit margin was definitely positive. It has been positive right up to the trailing 12 months. But where it falls down, operating profit, because of our operating margins, simply because, as, as we highlighted, the expenses that they have, and anybody can go and look on it, look on the prospectus, you'll see they have a high expense, especially with salaries. Yeah, I think they need to they need to improve that. As I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a specialized kind of business, though, right? Because... You know, designers, project managers, you know, persons in sales, etc. You're, you're gonna have your costs are gonna be high on that side. Well, I still think if they plan to do, and as I said, when we get when you get to explain the dividend policy, they plan to pay out eighty percent, up to eighty percent of the dividend. That's a eighty percent. But one of the things I noticed in the interview that Kalila did, it's they were very clear to say that. Well, pretty much the impression I got is don't expect a dividend every quarter. Well, here's the sad part about that. And that comes back to the first part of the of the presentation. This company has been around from since properly from since at least the two thousands. Mm -hmm. If the person if the per and this is fair by the way, if the persons take the take the information take the if the principals it's their company if the principals extract a dividend that's fine but how could you extract the dividend which will then leave you where you are at now with this level of net profit this is the actual net profit by the way this figure here 3.5 million dollars the actual nine months net profit right how can you then look and tell, tell the shareholder that don't expect a dividend all the time? Or should I say every quarter? You've been around for how many, how many years? 
You're not technically in your growth phase anymore. You have your big factory. You're now looking to expand your supply line, your, your sorry, your distribution lines of where your product is. So that was just my my thought process around it. Yeah, man, and, yeah, man. I get you. I get you. I get you. But I mean, it. I, I don't necessarily have an issue with that part because I think. Well, I thought so. And and this is this is never personal for us. We just try to review what we're seeing. But I think in in that case, for me. It would almost be better you say you're not going to pay a dividend until you're able to be able to you know yeah right until you yeah yeah or bring enough cash where it makes sense because to me if you pay me a dividend now and for the next six months i can't get it and you pay more again if if i'm a dividend investor what i'm looking for is consistency, consistency. right so it's better not to pay build the business grow the business expand all across the world because we know there's more than one way to make money from stocks. So there's right. there's capital gains, which if 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 the company is doing so well, you know, able to 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 fund itself, grow, I'd be happy with capital gains, even if you're not paying me a, a good dividend. But if you're if if you want to entice me with a dividend, I want to be sure that it's going to be consistent, right? That's that's right. kind of how, how I look at that. So when I saw 40 to 80 percent, because usually some companies will start out and say, we'll do like a 25% or we'll do like, you know, 30%. That to me, I thought would have been a little bit more, you know, conservative. But when you say 40 to 80%, and then, as I said, look at the shares outstanding, look at what that profit is going to be. And you realize even if they pay a dividend, that's not going to be a large dividend either. So, right. I mean, if, if you get a 0 0.002 cent dividend, is, is is that really going to be something that you're happy about right yeah. so i mean um, that's and that's for the long-term shareholder to, yeah. to, to ponder yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so so just just something to, to highlight there so you know would have gone through the the financials just now at a high level so as we said in the last two well the last two years you're seeing here what would have been their best years being being highlighted out, um <laughs> being highlighted so that's revenues um which would have increased right before the pandemic dipped slightly and based on what we would have seen in terms of the the projections and um, what they did say about i think one of one of the projects that they had last year was that there was a delay on on the customer side and not their side right so i, I assume once once a transaction is closed out then they'll be able to realize the full revenue from that. I don't know if some of that would have been realized already, right? So that's that's the part I wasn't clear on either. So let's let's look at the rest of it that they have. Um, and then there's profit before before uh, taxation. taxation. Anything you wanted to add So this, here? Is, this is actually pretty good because, so um, everybody should note that when they get to the junior stock exchange, yes, they're going to have, have that. Minute. They're going to have yeah. that ten ten year period of which the first five years they'll pay no taxes. So this is this is really good to actually see of what they're going to look like um, with respect to to the profit that they're that they they will take in because it will be untaxed for the next five years. So I mean, this is pretty good because clearly from that line, definitely. You know, for the last the three years prior to 2019, it it was really it was really low. It was hurting, and that's indicative of what was shown earlier in this in the in the in the sheet as well too of how much their expenses and other things basically take away from that yeah. profit that that yeah. profit yeah. line. So yeah. So non, I think non secular. Uh, hopefully, I'm pronouncing that right. So in in terms of part we're mentioning mentioning about increases expenses increasing, you know, he's saying that, or he or she is saying that as in the, the, the operating and admin expenses going up, would the increase in revenue help offset? To, to, to some extent, yes, but it really depends on- On how much? Has that increase in revenue in the first place? Because if you're, if you're increasing revenue from new business, we are not yet in, in an understanding of what it will cost to, to, to meet that new business, if that makes sense. So if I'm, if I'm operating in a new market, are, are my costs a little bit higher? Are my shipping costs higher? Are, are there maybe things that we have not considered yet right. could, could potentially be an impact? So you do have a point, 
but it's when we're talking about new business we need to kind of see what those expenses look like now based on that, that that new 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 um inflows of revenue right and in general if revenue if revenue and expenses are lockstep with each other then no it it actually makes makes no difference the same thing is if a comp if the company increases its revenue by 100 100 million more but their expenses also increase by 100 million more they're back to square one they're doing the same they're basically making the same amount of profit at the end after everything is taken you want to see where the company is actually improving their expense line so either they're bringing down how they how the salaries are done are they cutting are they doing something on some other line it it is not just about it's either about they're making a lot more revenue but at the same time not increasing the expenses or they're making a little bit more revenue and at the same time bringing down the expenses yeah one of yeah. the two has to happen so right. so we know from the from the from the the manufacturing perspectives there may be opportunities to automate because they he did mention for example that they use solar for example for their for their um electricity so yeah. we don't expect there to be any any increased costs maybe for that but again we don't know maybe maybe the sales team that they have for the us we don't know if it's the same sales team maybe we, they have to pay those persons a little bit more so usually salaries for example will vary depending on the markets you're operating in because i'm not going to assume that it's the same people that is going to be growing the business maybe they have to take on new new staff right and the salaries part is one of the biggest things that the biggest expenses that they have so everybody should actually pay attention to that yeah, because yeah. salary growth is something going forward. You definitely, for this company, in my opinion, want to pay attention to. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, again, you definitely good sign here coming into the last two years that they showed here, and they will have the benefit of being listed. So that line line item of the taxes that they are they're paying now is pretty much going to make this number, well, the net number, much much more attractive, right? All right, shareholders equity. Any any comments on this one? Um, so the shareholders equity. I also like this. I actually have a correction to make, by the way. So with respect to the working capital, actually, it's it's not the equity. It's basically what the business uses for the day to day. So working capital more being the receivables and the payables, etc. So I and I have to give a shout out to Simon. I uh, really love. I always say that every single time. Really, really helps me get better. So yeah, and it's something yeah. I actually look at. By the way, the receivables and the payables is actually something I look at all the time with respect to with respect to the balance sheet. And I also bring it over to the to the income statements and cash flow comparisons to basically do what I do is receivables against the sales because you want to see to make sure that the company is actually booking cash sales of itself and not just you just mentioned it in terms of new business a company can put on their on their income statement revenue that actually isn't cash that has been done right so if something has been promised to be paid it can go on the revenue line but you can't put something that is promised to be paid on the cash part it has to actually be a cash sale yeah, yeah. In the, in which, the is, which is why I was hoping that we could have seen that you know just at least going back as as at, at least five years you know that's the, and that's it in in terms of if you act if it was actually given that far back a better projection in, well, in my opinion a better projection would have been would have been give our better picture and it would have been actually by the way based on these charts it would have looked it it appeared that it would have been a really good looking picture based on based on how these summarized charts are looking you know yeah. at the end of the day and and truth be told you just you just chart you just chalk this up to be a blip because because look at this this is the pandemic pretty much and we're looking at the cash flow and liquidity this is the pandemic in 2020 and it's their highest amount of cash flow right and their highest amount in terms of their current ratio at that point for the last for the last four years so, so that, for those who don't know, Chica, what's what's the current ratio? So, pretty much when I calculated it, their current ratio at that point 
Um, well, the, the current ratio that they're putting out here is 1.5. So if we're looking at the orange line, the orange line is their current ratio, and it's tagged up at the one at the 1.5 marker. That is now it's asking you to explain what is oh, the current ratio. Basically, of so basically, yeah. current ratio very simply is the difference between the current assets and the current liability, current liabilities. That's that's what it is. And at the end, when you have that, that's that's basically the well, it's not cash, but it's 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 how much in a way current current assets is assets that can be turned into cash within a, a six month period within a year, right? Six six to twelve month period. So if they have a high current ratio, then that means they're in a very good position to basically liquidate. Need their liquidate short -term yeah. Correct, if they need to. So yeah, this is this is pretty good to see this that their current ratio is that high, um, and you want that, you know. At the end of the day, you really do want that. So, yeah. and even in their nine month in their nine month period of twenty twenty one it was positive for me based on the threshold that I'm using. They have 1.5. I have 1.57, right, in their nine months. And I do match up with them in the 2020 period for 1.5 of itself. And that's still, that's still pretty positive because um, it has been improving. If you chuck in the, co the, the revenue that they have from the, two, from the contracts that were mentioned earlier on, yeah. they would really be in a good position. But still, at the end of the day, I mean, what was that? What was that again that, that we saw for the revenue that was was expected? Yeah, just uh, just the total figure was it two hundred and fifty three million? Yeah, one second, hold on, let me bring it up. Uh, it is yes, two fifty five million. Two fifty five. Yeah. So so what? Well, so so they said that that should be realized in twenty twenty two financial that's year. Correct. Yeah, that's correct. Specifically, okay. specifically estimated, they say Q one is going to be eighty one million. 81.7 million q2 20.3 million and q sorry, so q2 and then q3 is their biggest is the most is the most basically is the majority of the money comes in q3 which is only and, and where where we know in terms of the nine months financials for for 2021 in terms of revenues well what was that amount uh hold on a second the nine month revenue. I just want to see if 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 we can, you know, how well, we can. We had, well, we had only had we only had with respect to revenue. Well, with respect to the revenue at that point, they actually had two hundred and nine million. Okay, okay, okay. Call it call it two ten if you're wrong it off because it's two hundred and nine point seven. So wrong it off to two hundred and ten million. So okay. yeah, if if they're right about that, they only have they only have. What's whatever it's quick maths? What's that difference to go of the two fifty five basically, right? Mm -hmm. So forty five, yeah. If you run it off to two ten, you have forty five million, forty five million left to go, you know. Yeah. To achieve. So what? So what we have up here is a five year income statement. Um, I mean, but Chike kind of already went through this, so we kind of don't need to go through it here again. And it's really just for us to see what you know 2021 ends like. Um and okay. they would have their their projections for 2022. Well, at least one of the things that were alluded to was something that is upcoming that's gonna be shared throughout the year. That's gonna be, you know, very, very good. And I mean, again, that's that's one of those things I've kind of noticed that what the company tries to position itself or at least maybe it's how they're advised they want to position the ipo at a point where at least for the first few months for to a year you're going to have a good sentiment in terms of deals coming in business you know good projects etc um for me actually what one of the concerns that i would have is so 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 one of the things we do here when we, when we look at companies we're thinking long term now we do acknowledge openly that persons don't always invest with a long time horizon. That's okay. That's that's completely fine. But one of the things I'm looking for in terms of a business is that kind of consistency and, and sustainability. Now, right. I think if it is that um, with, with, with the deals in the pipeline, that's a good sign. I wish we had some sort of ideas to um, if, if, if maybe a portion of those, because what I'm not sure about that, the deals in the pipeline, I don't know if some of it. So, for example, let's say they have a new contract with a customer. Do they take a 50% deposit 
And then, you know, 25, 25, do they take that? Like, I don't know. I don't know if you saw that in the in, in the prospectus anywhere, but that's the part I don't know. So I don't know if it is that when those deals are closed, we see that 255 million added to revenues or it's going to be just the remainder. That part, I'm not sure about. Um, so one of the things that I would like to see is just this consistency of performance over, you know, each quarter. So that's the part that mm -hmm. I'd like to see for the end of 2021 and maybe even see that for, for 2022. They did mention that the business is going to, the business is lumpy. <laughs> That's the word that was used. <laughs> that candid, was candid and truthful. Candid, very candid. No, yeah. So, I mean, if you understand the business, then I think you'd, you'd, you'd get that as well, which is okay. That's not necessarily a bad thing. And if, if you have enough to be able to meet your monthly obligations, then you get a lump sum that's okay but i want to paint that picture for potential investors that you may have some quarters not looking as rosy and then maybe the last one for the financial year or maybe with, i think is a cheeky the nine months the the third quarter is 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 usually their best so if it is that you have that what you can expect because of course investors are going to be responding to the reports as they come out so we've seen in the market where if the report is not favorable or meeting expectations, there's going to be an impact to the price. So you want to bear that in mind if you're investing and having that expectation that- the capital gains. Exactly, exactly. So, so that's kind of what, what I wanted to say here because that was my personal concern based on what I saw. Now, the question always comes up in our, in our Telegram group. If I'm able to meet my my objective as an investor, does it matter? And I would say that's why you have to make your own personal decision because we say this to give you the idea and understanding that depending on your time horizon, because not everybody buys for the short term. So if you're buying this thinking that you're you're going to get that that consistent performance over time, just understand based on the nature of the business, you're not going you you may not see that because they have admitted that themselves. So just understand that some, some quarters may not look as rosy as others, but overall, maybe the end of the year, they're in a good position overall, still profitable, etc. So just bear that in mind. Coincidentally too, that is something that this, that reviewing this company actually, as I've, I've said it before, no stranger to it. I don't, I don't necessarily look on quarters. I look on the, as a long-term investor, I look on the nine months more than anything else. But funnily enough, I have now realized and learned with a company, companies make their money in different quarters because some companies are cyclical, et cetera, and so yeah, forth. Yeah, yeah. So with a company like this, you definitely want to identify some kind of trend where most of their money comes in in that particular the truth is, you not be able to cheek it. you may not be able to because of the, the, the nature of the business because if deals are in the pipeline now and they're closing out some so it could be that sometimes you're able to identify a trend but so for example i was in the in in the software sales business q4 was always our best quarter but that's, that's normally because, hey, maybe the company wants to have a good end of year, but with the type of business you have in terms of manufacturing, you may not be able to speed up certain things. So you, you, you may have it, you may have a really good quarter because it, 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 it so happens that maybe the, the, the hotel they're working for has a, has a launch date of 2023. So they want to finish it by Q4 December, sure, but it's it's it may not be the same customer every year at the same at the same time. You understand what I mean? So yeah. they may still have a profit a profitable financial year, but you may not have that consistency in terms of each quarter, and that's something and that you should and you should it's difficult it is difficult to identify which is the quarter because it's lumpy. Said, yeah, so exactly. So, so, so Peter made a good point, and I'm going to highlight what Philip had said earlier as well. So, Philip, uh, shout out to Philip, by the way. Philip was saying that salary growth is almost always a, a step behind revenue growth, thus preserving margins. And he's saying, if not, you, you are running a company, you're running a government. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> funny, funny. he had mentioned that, and um, you know, Peter is saying the business is based on customer 
on customer on customer demand based on on it being a service offered and that's risky and yeah. it's it, it's not necessarily make it any riskier you know because that's that's not what i see what i see is for persons who want to be able to have that predictability you may not have it from what i can tell the business has a good reputation they're they're they have a good plan to grow um and so my concern here is not profitability my yeah. concern here is well if i'm going to be a shareholder what will be the response of other investors in the seasons where they're not doing as well because if i'm a shareholder the thoughts of other investors is going to is going to impact the price of the shares i'm holding yeah. if, if you understand what i mean so that's yeah. that's kind of the the perspective i'm i'm looking at it from so let's let's move on because I wanted us to, to go through the MDNA and I wanted us to wrap this up within an hour. We're going to go slightly over, of course, because we haven't done that yet. But we went through this before. It's in everything that you're seeing here is from the prospectus. So I want us to kind of wrap this up. Chika, anything you want to highlight here? Uh, no, the balance sheet we already talked about, and, and yeah. what we have basically is again pay attention to pay attention to how. So we have that the liabilities actually. We did speak about that. Look at the liability amount that is that is coming for 2020. That's that entire liability amount is 207, 207 million, sorry. Cause that's in millions. Yeah. And they're only getting how much? So if they're gonna take money, if they might pay debt down, I wonder how much debt is really going to be paid down. That's the first part. What percentage of that is gonna be paid down yeah. in order to ensure that they also maintain a good working capital um yeah yeah basket so yeah that's something that's something i will be looking looking towards as we go forward in terms of how that decreases because as you can clearly see it jumps back up in 2020 it went down in 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 2019 and based on how it is on the current nine months of itself the total debt for nine uh, months 2021 yeah. uh, share that again sure so we, let's let's bring up that so person see it so share screen one second. Yeah, man. So the nine months 2021, which is this column here, total debt stands currently at 155, 935, 872. And that's just nine months. And we still got three more months to add on with the trade does it, 12 months. Does it, does it say in the notes what, what that debt is comprised of? It should always be there every single time. Um in the nine months, yes, it will definitely be there. It, look, go, you have the perspective, so so just go through that. Go, go to the... Go okay, to we'll, the we'll, we'll search right when we're going we'll through get it. Yeah. MDNA. Yeah. MDNA. MDNA. Yeah. Okay, there. Okay, all right, cool. So, so let's, let's wrap up this part then. All right, so that's that. Let's talk about the dividend policy now, Chike. So we mentioned this. This is straight from the prospectus again. So if a company is admitted, the directors intend to pursue a liberal dividend policy that projects an annual dividend of between 40 to 80% of net profits available for distribution, subject to the need for reinvestment in the company from time to time. So as I said, what was said on, on, on Kalila's show last night is that if it is that they need the money for something else, then they're going to use it. And this is the, the, the net profit figure for the year with 1.12 billion shares outstanding that 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 is going to kind of determine the, the, i guess the range in in terms of dividend that you can expect so just bear that in mind um and it says annual dividend so it could be it could be that split over quarters it could be it's a one 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 dividend announcement per year i mean we don't know as it Hmm? Or, or biannually, which is two. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. on that point of this, everybody needs to make note: your dividend is coming from one place, which is net yeah. profit, which was the part that I have zo zeroed in on. After all of those expenses come out, what is left back from a five hundred odd million dollar revenue line comes down to that. That's the only place. By their by their statement here that net profit that dividends are coming out of there are other ways to get get a dividend as well. There's a capital distribution, but that's not stated. If you get one, great, but you can expect your net your, your dividend coming out of those net profits. 
you want to see that net profit figure then going back up, right? And going past the 70 odd million dollars into the 100 million, et cetera, because more net profit means a bigger dividend pie that, that you can get. So, yeah. yeah. So just bear that in mind, right? So if don't just hear the word dividend and get excited, it has to be coming from somewhere. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing for a sec and bring up the prospectus for us to look at the MDNA. management discussion and analysis. All right, so I'm going to just show persons who just, you know, for you to see that everything that we kind of looked at is from the prospectus. And we have the link in the description of the video. We recommend that you read it for yourself. So it speaks about you know the company's name, um, you know, where they're go. et cetera. Ah, yes, please. Right. All right. Hopefully you guys can see that, right? So so that's why I did the presentation because I thought that would be easier to read than looking at the at the prospectus through through Adobe. All right. So let's just kind of scroll through. Um, you know, this is a state this the share capital part that we had shared. Um, so I'm just going to go straight to what we need to see, all right? Um, okay, so I thought that I'd zoom in here as well. Yeah, the makeup of the company is actually very good and also very important in terms of how it's broken down. That's something good for shareholders to know. Yeah. Um, but for me, more importantly, this is this is great, but the, the, the really important part was on the, is on the other side to so scroll over. Yeah. Because we as shareholders long term, we like to see who's got skin in the game. In terms of the change when the company is going to be changed, when the when the shares are listed, actually, the principal shareholders, which are Mr. Sagani, JKZ Limited, Euro um Eurobion Limited, are still going to have when you scroll down before and after. The same amount, pretty much. They're still going to be in the game. Yeah, 3% less. The, mm -hmm. So the person's about, but who gets removed is the, scroll back up. Let me get the name right. For a second, is this, GFP the, Property the, Investments. The property investments. Limited, which yeah. is, really which what was is basically those same persons at the top <laughs> doing, and that's, that's how business is done. That's fine. And I like that. So at least I know that, People, the, the principal people still have skin in the game. That's that's yes. that's basically what I, I like to see, and I, I'm happy about that. So that's fine. Yeah, JFP investment property, they can go out and build but because actually that's exactly what they're doing as well. Too. They're in they're in invest in, in real estate, etc. So yeah, fine. Go go right ahead, do what you're doing, no problem, no problem. Yeah. And I just wanted to highlight this as well so you can see the full scope of the products that they offer. So on one side, right, so I would love to try to understand which segments of the business are most profitable, um, you know, which, which, which type of projects are prioritized. Just, just those, you know, kind of things would, would help me to understand, right, because not everything here is maybe worth the time and the, and the resources put into doing it, right? So you want to... Think about those things as well. But if you want to know the full range of products, you can check out this page. I think this is page 12 of the prospectus. All right. All right. What's the next part? I want to stop. Um, so we do. We still haven't gotten to the MDNA. No. Yeah. That's that. That's where we're going. Right. All right. Okay, here we go. Right. Yeah. This definitely wants to be zoomed in on. All right, so we highlighted this part already in terms of what they make, what they do. Um, in terms of, we mentioned they have, you know, a, a 75,000 square foot facility, um, you know, being in business for 36 years. These are some of the customers that, that they have. Marriott, they mentioned that, not, notable company there restaurants of Jamaica. So I heard, um, you know, for example, um, you know, relationships with KFC, KFC, the relationships with Starbucks, as these companies grow within the Caribbean, I mean, that, that relationship is good to have. Um, we, we heard about the hotel, we heard about um, some, some others as well. So that's, that's, that's good to note there. And 
We can go I straight down to the so the outlook is very the outlook yeah. is actually right here. That's actually where I'm headed. Yeah. So it says going forward, the company anticipates significant tailwinds for revenues to materialize from its hotel segment, as according to the Jamaica Information Service, there are some 7,500 new hotel rooms to be built in Jamaica over the next two years. These hotels will require furniture for rooms, lobbies, restaurants, beaches, common areas, and staff facilities. Given the, given the company's wealth of experience in operating in this sector, it expects to be a top competitor in this space. So note it says expects, and it mentions, you know, 7,500 new hotel rooms being built. Um, if it expects to be a top competitor, I mean, that, that would be a good opportunity for them. That, so, so what I think we're likely to see when things go back to normal, you may see, you know, more, more hotels being, being opened up. So the point was made, I think, when the 876 team did their interview, check that out, by the way, really good discussion with, 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 with Ryan Strawn. They mentioned, um, you know, the fact that, so Ryan mentioned that places like, you know, hotels every few years are going to renovate, fast food restaurants every every few years are going to renovate. So it's not just a one-time business that, that JFP has. They have the opportunity to keep doing business as 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 the years extend, as the companies grow, etc. That's good. I wish we had some idea as to how often these things are done. That would that would help me as well understand what the company's outlook would be. But just understand tourism growing and going back to normal is a good thing for this type of business, right? So it says based in September, the, the, the hotels and restaurant industry grew by 114% compared to the prior period in 2020. Of course, we, we know how, how that year impacted tourism. So the positive momentum is sustainable in the near term based on they would have shared with their pipeline as well as numerous direct weekly flight routes to Jamaica are, are introduced across Europe. I, I think I can just kind of speed through here. Mm -hmm. So the rebo rebounding of tourism industry coupled with the construction of new hotel rooms has presented opportunities for the company to continue to grow its, its trajectory. All right. And then it speaks about the quick service restaurants. So that's the KFC, Pizza Hut, etc. So as those companies expand, this would be good for, for JFP commercial and, and and office spaces. I'm just looking to see if there's anything else there. BPOs and those type of companies. So it seems like, you know, if you see a new a new call center being put up, just hope that this company is gonna be one of them doing doing business with them. So those are the kind of opportunities they're looking for. I think we should and outline that more than likely they will outline certain parts of it. So I don't think we'll have to do on hope. Just basically be watching that quarterly, th those quarterly doc, um, statements, et cetera, like a hawk in terms of, yeah. because they should list who their competitors are. There is something we didn't include in this that, that is very actually important. And it's just because based on what has happened today, yeah. it's the macroeconomic. Can you go to page, it's page 82. Page 82? No, pages. this dog is two pages. It has, has four sorry, pages. It has, oh, sorry. It's on page 46 of the PDF of itself. But it's page 82 in the prospectus because the prospectus is right double sided. Uh, yes. Does it say risk factors? No. No, that's no, not it. it. Risk. Yeah, it's not 46 on, on your PDF. Look for 82 on the PDF, which is risk factors. Risk factors, okay. And thank you for reminding me of that. That's usually something that I want to share as well. Risk. Very important because the every first, business has risk. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's the first thing that is on the risk factors based on what has happened today and going forward, how it will impact the company. Is this one? Is this one you're talking credit risk? No, 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 no. Which one? It's, it's uh, in the risk actual, section. Actual page is an actual section. The actual section that says risk factors. That's what we're looking for. Risk factors. All right. Um, let me know it's if you page, see. It, it's page eight. It's page eighty-two of the of the actual PDF. Not not the. No man. The it, oh, okay, okay, okay. I get what there you're saying. Go. Here we go. Yeah. Stop right here. Zoom this in. First part. Now this. So. For those who are not aware, 
today the government of the not the government sorry the bank of jamaica increased the interest rates of the country up to about four percent what that means is that there's an intention to basically mop up liquidity in the country which means that you know there over time there might be a slowdown in terms of how companies um get 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 loans capital etc yeah. this part that the country that it says changes in fiscal and monetary policies introduced by the government of Jamaica may affect the behavior of capital markets, in, including the junior markets. Me? Such changes, <laughs> such changes in policies, may create opportunities as well as challenges for the com company. It yeah. is something to pay attention to going forward. No, this is for me personally. Their their pipeline to the global market is no even more important for me based yeah. on how things are happening are playing out in the in the broader scale of the jamaican economy as we go over time so the other stuff and i don't see them getting a revocation of tax concessions but you know but this this entire risk factors part yeah please yeah. please definitely please go through it yeah definitely go through them understanding it is a massively important part of the ipo more not more than anything else but along with everything as it is high up there that you yeah. need to understand what affects the business going forward for quarters and years to come pretty much because as i said you know from the from, from so for those and their members of our community they can they, they look to purchase for ipos for short-term gain right so, so some persons their focus is not they're not worried about next year or or, or you have or the year after they're looking for short-term gain if that's your objective these things won't necessarily be an impact to you but if you're the type of investor where you're purchasing to have something in your portfolio three four five years from now these are the things that would concern you because it's not that it won't provide opportunity because i believe what volatility provides opportunity but you want to understand these things because it will impact how the business performs in terms of their time on the market, right? Yeah. So um, I think I think it's Nikita is asking: Is there a guarantee that they will get these hotel contracts? No, no there's no guarantee. <laughs> there's no guarantee. So 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 that's why I'm happy that it was worded in that way, and that's why I read it the way that I did, because even though you have seventy five hundred, so it's not like they said, well, if they were the only competitor in the space, because again, this was alluded to on the interview that they're not the only one in the space. They're the ones maybe operating at that scale, but it depends on the relationship. It depends on the hotel. It, I mean, because if if they were the only provider, then you could say out, out of those 7,500 rooms, that's going all to them. There, there's no guarantee of that. They would have to bid for it. And and these these hotels may invite you know companies from outside of Jamaica to bid as well. So you don't know, right? There is no guarantee there. All right, what else we wanted to look at? Because we're we're wrapping up soon. Back to to MDNA, right? Uh yes. Yeah. So we're looking at the outlook. All right. So I was reading through this. Um, okay. Yeah. So I definitely wanted to show some of the work that they have done, which as I said, is definitely worth noting. So this is Starbucks at Draxall. This is um, Spanish court, I think it is. Nice, nice quality and, work. And they do quality work. And that's the thing yeah, that Mr. That Mr. Siaga said in the, in the interview, he says, they do such good work that you know they don't have to go back and be, and be making adjustments or, or, or repairs, etc. Exactly, and exactly. That's, that's good for the business that they're doing the work for but not good really for them because you know but it's can't good that. assuming that they're pricing appropriately so to me you know if, if if you buy something that's high quality and you pay a premium for it and it lasts you five or ten years that's good but then of course i think that the point you're trying to make is that if if there's no i guess frequency as to how often a customer has to come back to you but it depends on the industry. I think it, I think it's definitely a good thing that their work will last. No, they, they just have to rely on volume and then wear and tear, right? Because if it's built well and it has wear and tear, then it still has to be replaced, right? So that would be like the, the fast 
um, the, the quick service restaurants, but maybe like, let's say if it's like something like this, where, where you have the desk in, in a hotel room, that may not wear in the same way as maybe the bed, because the bed is being slept on or the chairs, you know, things like that. So it really depends on what aspect of what they create. Some things will wear because they use other things because they are fixtures, they won't wear as often, but we don't know when these things are replaced, if, if the hotels just replace everything, even though it may not wear, just to change the look mm -hmm. overall. So things like that you want to think about. Yeah. All right. Um, so we looked at these. Well, we didn't look at expenses, but we spoke about them. So um, operating profits, looked at those. I think, is, is there anything else you wanted to touch on, though, Chike? Uh, so, I mean, I mean, we know what it. We know what they look 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 like with respect to the financials already. Um, we know why they why, basically, based on the financials, why they would definitely need that that um, that injection of capital. And I would only say that based on what is there, it's right there. You don't have to do any further, any any big calculations. Looking on the same same sheet that you had up with, they are looking at yeah. prospectus. Look on the page that has the nine month projection right now and look on how their cash was depleted. Um, pretty much they are sitting on negative um, cash flow from operations. And that's very important for a company like them. That's what they do. They have to get their money. They have to get their money or their cash from those operations. If they're not getting it, it has to be coming from somewhere, somewhere else, which is some kind of investment. Are, are so forth what it is if it's not coming from the from the operations side they had a negative negative cash flow from operations and as such the overall cash flow at the end in terms of what is called cash and cash equivalents when everything is put together in the cash flow statement was negative which for me i don't like that i've said that before but you know again it's only nine months let's see yeah. what happens because in the year in the year they actually had very solid cash flow for the year of 2020 they had over 95 million which was more than was this it was at least one it was at least two and a half times um yeah two and a half times what they had in 2019. let's see what happens eagerly look forward to what their 2021 report says yeah, same, same, same so i mean um i'm just gonna share quickly how to apply for those interested um, so it mentions in the prospectus, as I think I've since heard that you can apply via NCB Go IPO and GK, of course, this is a form that you would use. And I think it's on JMB Moneyline as well. So the forms are at the back of the prospectus or you speak to your financial advisor, fill out these yes. details, submit it to them, etc. And, you know, options for payment were listed as well. So, you know, standard stuff managers check. Or, or cleared funds within your GK cap account, transfer, etc. So speak to your financial advisor if you're interested and you'll be able to apply. So I just wanted to share that because, you know, some persons may not know how and everything that we would have shared came from the prospectus. Every single piece of information that we shared was from there. So you, you should definitely read it through if you're interested and be sure to make an informed decision before you, you know, determine what you're going to do. So, I mean, for me, GK, we, we've been kind of discussing this before. I said, so I like the business. I, li I like the fact that they've been around for a while, strong brand. Um, they seem to be growing some, some key partnerships. Those are all good things for me. My concern is really that consistency of cash. Um, I'm, I'm expecting some quarters to be less than favorable, depending on how how the, the, the deals will come in. Um, there was a, a concern about price as well. And we would have seen, um, and, and this is normal, right? So brokers will release their, their IPO review. So you should actually expect more to come out in, in the next few days. So one was released today. I don't know if you have any thoughts about it, Chike, that, that you wanted to share. I, I mean, I don't want to skew anybody's opinion, so I'm not going to share it. But you're muted. I'm not hearing oh, you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm saying that's, that's why I don't want to bring it up. 
I same, agree. Same, I, I'm, same. I'm not. I'm not just saying. Speak, read speak. and you know, speak to your advan- financial advisor. Read the prospectus for yourself. Come to your own conclusion about it. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, what we've had this ad nauseum today about the discussion based on the pricing of the company, it's a small amount of units that you're gonna get. Um, it's a small amount of units going on to the market, dependent on your yeah. financial so, goal. So based on that demand, right? So, so so that's the thing. So based on a small number of units being being made available, the the potential demand. I'm I'm anticipating there's going to be some sort of upside at least in the short term. That's my expectation as to where that ceiling is. Who knows? Long term, the market seeing, will decide and set yeah. everything. Seeing their performance quarter over quarter is my concern. But what 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 also what also is a concern for me is allocation of units because we yeah. saw with Spur Tree, you for example. Got yeah. yeah, so so it's not the same company, and you should not compare right. IPOs in that way. It's just really know the size of the offer itself. Because you can also expect if this is oversubscribed, you're going to get a small number of units as well. So Spiritry was oversubscribed by a billion. They were trying to raise 338. It was a billion. They you got 10,000 and then 11.79% of the balance. I think if this is oversubscribed in a similar way, that allocation is going to be even less. So you, if if you apply for a large amount, you're going to be disappointed if it is oversubscribed because you're likely to get a low allocation. With that in mind, it may be a situation where you have a small amount. If persons are trying to get more after it's listed, you may see that you, you you may see that demand causing the price to go up a little, but then it may not. You know, yeah. It is what it is. What it is. Yeah. Yeah. The market. So, the, the market will do what the market the market decides to do. Yeah. Yeah. So just I mean we we want to set that that expectation because we've seen IPOs come out in the past. Maybe the first day or two there's a, a run up. And then after that, everybody's like, what happened? I thought this was the best thing since last break. Not <laughs> all of you are equal. So you want to make, you, you you want to understand based on your own preferences, you know, time horizon, et cetera, what you're going in for. You know, so some persons are saying, if I get 5,000 units and, and I'm able to make a good margin on that, that's good for me. So it depends on on your starting point, your, your objectives, et cetera. Personally, um, I want to see more from the company before I make a decision. I haven't seen enough in terms of that 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 performance long term to to look at it to to shortlist it. So personally, I'm I'm not gonna have any any skin in the game there where that is concerned f- for this particular company. So Simone, it was it was VM that did that review um, that was put out. So check that out and as. As I said, I do expect other companies to put out their reviews in the coming weeks. There is an expectation of oversubscription. There is an expectation um, and, and, and expectation of early close. What that means is that um, it should be an interesting first week, but who knows what's going to happen after well, that. We should, we should point out as well, Simone, you can also check out that IC Insider also did, uh, did their um, their review the review and well. process as well too so you yeah. you can read that as well too okay all right so we normally have a friday stock market review we couldn't fit that in today so we're oh. going to do it likely on monday right Chica? and then we'll do our review on trans jamaica on wednesday yeah yeah so look out for that review on wednesday if it's your first time here thank you for joining us for this time Please do like the video. It helps us a great deal. You can join us on Telegram. Our Telegram group has been amazing. The, and active. The, the discussions yeah. have been very, very insightful. Some interesting characters. So if you do join us, don't be a spectator. Be sure to add your your, your thoughts as well. I'm, I'm happy to say that it has been a safe space. I have not seen our... our we haven't had any issues where that is concerned. I think persons feel free to talk, share their perspectives. 
we don't always agree about approach, but that's okay. We're not asking everybody to invest in the same way. We just group want think to- is, Group think is not advised. Exactly. We want to create a space for persons to learn. And I think that is being accomplished. So that's good. You will hear me say a few words each, each week. That's just normal. There are some things that I realize that I cannot say because it may skew someone's decision to invest. And so I don't say it. I would prefer if you figure it out without me saying it. I think that's fair because, um, yeah, that's, that's how I prefer it. So like the video, register for our upcoming class on March 5th. That's like two weeks away, right? Yes, Tamikins, that, that's exactly it, right? Yeah. So register for the class if you want to understand how to analyze companies for yourself. We're going to teach you how to do it. And Chike is going to be there as well. You'll, you'll get to see, and maybe he'll be able to share as well, how he looks at companies. But we're going to go through the financial statements, show, break it down for you. If you know, if you've ever been to our class, it's simple language, easy to understand. It's completely free as well so you don't have to worry about being able to afford it the only thing you're paying with is your time which is priceless but of course i think it's it lowers the barrier of entry to join our classes subscribe to our newsletter and subscribe to the channel thank you so much Shike. you have anything you want to add before we shut it down no as i always close out especially with this ipo do your homework <laughs> yeah yeah all right guys so we'll see you in the telegram group and we'll be back on Monday. All right. So have a good. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're really, doing, they're really going off. Know, the but they say is a Javan. Depending on the price you buy, if you're planning to buy that first week, what price you're going to get it at? Because let's say it triggers circuit breaker the first day or two, and you buy at a premium, and then you're not able to sell it to somebody else at a higher price. What does that mean for you? I'm, I'm just saying that, right? So we don't know what, what's going to happen, but it's it's not simple. It depends on what what the overall market sentiment is at that point. I've, so been, taught, just, I've been taught never try to predict the price, or should I say the statement is better. Stop trying to catch falling daggers. Do your homework. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Have a good weekend, guys. Take care. All right, everyone.